Our speaker today is Carol Zamparescu from Ghent University. His areas of specialty are planar graphs, Hamiltonian cycles, topological graph theory, and algorithms. Today he will speak on missing cycle length in the cycle spectra of polyhedral graphs. Welcome, Carol. The stage is yours. Hello, thank you very much for having me here. Um, yeah, thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, Sandra. Uh, and uh, thank you all for attending. So uh, the last time I, I, I spoke uh, at the seminar was back in 2015. Uh, and uh, it was a very nice experience. And it's, it's great to be back at least in this, uh, in this form. Uh, yeah. Um, so I want to speak today about uh, some recent conjectures and solutions also to these conjectures. Uh, on uh, and these these uh, pertain to to the gaps in the cycle spectra of of planar three connected graphs. So that's what polyhedral means. Uh, and we'll also be looking at the cubic case. So at three three regular graphs. Okay. Um, so let's get started. Just a, a few a few basic uh, notions here of the cycle spectrum of a graph G, which I will denote by S of G, is a set of lengths just of, of cycles in this graph G. And I, just put here uh, the Peterson graph up for as an example, and the cycle spectrum here is five, six, eight, nine. Well, uh, we all know its girth is, is five, and uh, it's not Hamiltonian, so uh, um, it should be um, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But it turns out that seven is actually not present. This is a standard exercise. I think uh, um, Douglas West also has it in his, in his book. It's an application of the pigeonhole principle that there is no seven cycle here. Um, so, so this is the cycle spectrum. Uh, we do not care about how many of these cycles occur in the graph. That's also an interesting question, but for the cycle spectrum, we don't care about that. Yeah. So, um, and, and, and the girth of a graph is just the, the smallest value that occurs in S of G in the spectrum. And the circumference is the, the biggest one. Yeah. So, so the girth, in other words, the girth is the, the length of a shortest cycle and, and the circumference the length of a longest cycle. Okay. And then, um, I'll give a few uh, a few results, just uh, um, some some results I consider important in the vicinity of this um, of this notion, and then and then we'll get to to the gaps. Yeah. So um, some important things have been obtained for for the size of the spectrum. So that's the number of elements that occur, pairwise different elements in S of G, and one. Uh, deep result in these directions by Sudakov and Herstrate. And they showed that if you have a graph uh, of a fixed girth G, now again, girth, that's a length of a short cycle, and average degree 48 times B plus one, um, then you will have one over eight uh, times D to the power floor function of girth minus one over two consecutive even integers in S of G. Okay, of course, see those then pairwise different, so you get a large, you get a large cycle spectrum, and this gives you then that inequality up there, which is a conjecture of average. Yeah. Um, another nice result in this direction is by uh, Mylans, Pender, Altenbach, Regen, and West, and they show that if you know that the order of the graph is in S of G, so the graph is Hamiltonian, that's equivalent, yeah, um, then the the size of the spectrum of the cycle spectrum is at least and this number that you see down here, or is strictly greater than uh, square root of p minus one over two times the natural logarithm of p minus one, where this number p is the size minus the order. Yeah, And again, uh, much can be said also about this, this interesting inequality. But uh, I just want to point out that if you, if you forget about the logarithm and just, just look, up, look at the square root here, um, and you would write it as square root of, of a constant c times size minus order, then it's not hard to see that, that that constant C cannot be greater than one. So at least in that sense, this is best possible. Yeah. Um, OK. Um, so now there, there, are, there are various other problems um, which you can rephrase in terms of the cycle spectrum. You know, classically, we don't, maybe we don't do it, yeah? but you can rephrase them and see them also as a problem on the cycle spectrum of graphs. So I think this is really very, very fundamental somehow. Um, and um, uh, a natural question is whether uh, if you have cycles of a certain length, 
um, that necessarily implies the presence of another length, yeah? a cycle of another length. And, and for instance, um, if G has n vertices, say, and you have an n minus one cycle, do you necessarily have a Hamiltonian cycle? That's a very naive question, and clearly that's not the case, right? Just take k t comma uh, t plus one, have complete bipartite graph, t vertices on the left, t plus one vertices on the right hand side, and then uh, clearly, clearly this is not true, right? So, so this is, but this is just na a naive thing just to to look at. What what if we what if we push harder, right? What if what if all vertex deleted subgraphs are Hamiltonian, right? Must then the graph be Hamiltonian, the graph itself? Yeah. And then we actually saw already the, the answer to this question. Still no. Peterson's graph, for instance. Yeah? Any vertex you delete from Peterson's graph, you get a Hamiltonian graph. Yeah? Um, it's full of n minus one cycles, but, but Peterson's graph is not Hamiltonian. Yeah? And um, we can go even further. Yeah? And um, in the early 70s, Hvatal asked whether there are planar graphs in which every vertex deleted subgraph is Hamiltonian, but the graph itself is not. Yeah? Just like in Peterson's graph, but Peterson's graph, of course, is not planar. Yeah? So what about the planar case? And Grünbaum went as far as to conjecture that no such graphs exist. Yeah? He worked on this, but he, he thought that, that no, no, they, they, they do not exist. Turns out that they do. Yeah? So the answer is still no. Answer is still negative, even if we impose all of these additional restrictions in particular planarity. Um, and, and Thomas showed this in 76, yeah? And so, so and I, I went this route because planar graphs will play, play here an important role. In fact, this is planar and three connected this graph, uh, and this will play an important role today, yeah? Okay, so um, now we have seen all these negative results. Let's also have something for balance, uh, something positive. And I think one really beautiful result in this direction, which uh, in general people, People are uh, not, 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 not everybody knows about it. Let's say, let's put it this way. So um, it, it follows from, from work of, of Andrew Thomas that if a cubic graph uh, means, cubic means three regular, every vertex has degree three. Yeah? If, if such a graph contains a vertex deleted subgraph, which has an odd number of Hamiltonian cycles. Okay, so, so you can find in your cubic graph one vertex, uh, which you remove, and you get a graph which has an odd number of Hamiltonian cycles. Then the graph itself must be Hamiltonian. Yeah, I really like this result. And then there's an, another variation of this also, which is also a consequence uh, of this work that if you have a cubic graph and that graph itself has an odd number of Hamiltonian cycles, for instance, here's a triangular prism, yeah, is such a graph, then all of its vertex delete subgraphs are Hamiltonian. Now, so we're going here from n to n minus one, the presence of n minus one cycles. Um, and in this talk, also cubic graphs will play an important role. So we'll be looking uh, mostly at, at planar three connected uh, cubic graphs. Yeah? And then we'll also move to, 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 uh, to planar three connected ones, but planar three connected cubic graphs, this will be really uh, the, the most important part in the, in the first part, certainly in the first section. Okay. Now, um, another, another type of problem that you can rephrase in this context yeah, is uh, the following. So um, you can look at the class of graphs G yeah, and uh, a set of, of natural numbers A. And uh, um, the problem is, the question is to decide whether if every graph, whether every graph in G contains a cycle whose length is in that set yeah, of numbers, of, uh, of natural numbers. So for instance, Grudge's theorem states that if you have a planar graph with chromatic number four, then three must be in your cycle spectrum. There must be a triangle in that graph. Yeah? And, and Steinberg's conjecture for a long time. Uh, it was a conjecture stated that um, there must be a four or five in the cycle spectrum. Yeah? Uh, and this was disproved yeah, by Cohen, Adat, Eftich, Kral, Lee, and Sargado. Yeah? But it's still open whether this intersection of the cycle spectrum was four, five, and six is not empty. Yeah? Um, so for seven, it has been solved. Yeah, four, five, six, seven, that's, that's done, but this is still an open case. So um, we don't know that, yeah. But but here I wanted to give this as an example of a, a, of a, a classic theorem, something like Grudge's theorem, yeah, which is which you rephrase a bit to see it as a, as a uh, something um, regarding the cycle spectrum and in fact gaps right in the cycle spectrum. That's what we're looking here. Um, so now let's talk about gaps. Um, 
And um, let A and B be natural numbers with B greater than or equal to A greater than or equal to three. And we say then that A comma B, and this interval we are writing it is a gap of G if the intersection of the cycle spectrum, spectrum with this interval is empty and G ought to have circumference greater than B. Now, so, so why do we put that there at the end, this, this condition? Because we want there to be something beyond B, another, at least one other length, okay? Because otherwise the problem um, becomes of a different nature. Then you're actually looking at, you can look at graphs which have small circumference yeah? and the, the techniques are quite different. So we want really there to be something beyond this uh, upper bound for the gap. Yeah. That's why this condition has circumference greater than B is also there. Yeah, so, so to be, this is really important. So, so let me just emphasize, so this gap means there is no cycle of length, say L uh, with L taking any value between A and B. Yeah, that's, so that's, this is this, uh, this gap of the cycle spectrum. And of course, if AB is a gap of G, then also every interval contained in A is a gap of G, yeah? Okay. So um, Martin Merker, um, put on archive and then published uh, the following two conjectures. Now, uh, these will in fact uh, appear in 2021. So, so we, are, we will now here discuss conjectures from the future, uh, but uh, uh, they are on archive. So, so you can have a look at them and uh, um, see for yourself. So let, let me briefly recall them. So conjecture one is the following. Um, if you have a, a natural number K, um, at least two, and G is a planar three connected cubic graph of circumference at least K, then it must contain a cycle whose length lies in this interval that is here. So K comma two K plus two. Okay, that plus two is important. K comma two K plus two. Okay, that, that's, that's his conjecture one. And um, he formulated another conjecture, uh, which gives, gives somewhat more flexibility. Uh, it states that there is an actual number C such that the intersection of the cycle spectrum with the interval K comma 2K plus C is non-empty for every natural number K and planar three connected graph G of circumference at least K. I want to point out that in conjecture two, we are not dealing anymore only with the cubic case. Yeah? So, so in conjecture two, it's really, it's, it's, it's one skeletal polyhedra. We don't care about the degrees. Uh, but, but in conjecture one is very much, we are focusing on, on the three regular, i.e. cubic case. Yeah? Um, and uh, what I want to do here today is to uh, talk about these two conjectures in fact present solutions. Yeah? Uh, and uh, um, the main purpose is, is to, uh, because, because this is recent as you can see, but there has been also some recent progress. Um, just to, to bring you up to speed on these developments, because uh, um, I think there are also some, still some uh, uh, quite uh, natural problems which are open, and uh, I hope this can stimulate a bit research in, in this direction, some more research. Okay, so um, Merka himself, he proved uh, in his paper that for any non-negative integer k, every planar three connected cubic graph, g, of circumference at least k, uh, must have some cycle length in uh, k comma 2k plus 9, okay? So I, I'm going back for a moment. So the conjecture is plus 2, yeah? And he proved it for plus 9, yeah? Okay. Um, so let's have a look at some, some easy cases, some small cases, okay? Um, so by Euler's formula, every plane cubic graph contains a phase of length 3 or 4 or 5. Yeah? So conjecture 1 certainly holds for for small k, for k equals two or k equals three. Okay. Now, suppose it is untrue for k equals five. Yeah? Uh, we can do k equals four also, it's similar, a bit easier. Uh, I won't do that. I just, I want to show you the argument for k equals five because it's, 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 uh, it doesn't take long. So um, in that case, there is a plane three connected cubic graph G of circumference at least 13 with gap five comma 12. Yeah, no cycle of length five, six, seven, etc., up to 12. Okay, that's the situation. Um, now, any three or four cycle, any triangle or quadrilateral in G must be the boundary of a phase of G, okay? And any two phases in G of size three or four 
are disjoint since you three connected, right? So, so if you would just, it's, it's, it's cubic. We're in the cubic case. So if you would have two triangles sharing an edge, right? Uh, that's no good because, because the three connected here. Um, and, and if you have a triangle and a quadrilateral next to it, well, you get five immediately, right? You just go around. So you have a five cycle, but that's not allowed. You have a gap, five comma 12, yeah? And six for six, the same thing. You have two quadrilateral, quadrilaterals sharing an edge. Then you get a six cycle, but six is, is, is not allowed to occur as a cycle. Okay. Um, so we contract. We contract every triangle. We contract every quadrilateral yeah, to a vertex. And we obtain a graph G prime. Yeah? And if we exclude the three and the four cycles, the very short cycles, then cycles in G have length at least 13, right? Um, and um, it's, it's easy to see that in this uh, setting here, on any L cycle C of G, C shares at most a floor function of L over two edges with all the triangles and all the quadrilaterals. Yeah? Um, so G prime is a planar graph, minimum degree at least three, with no cycle of lengths less than seven. Yeah? But, but this, is, this is impossible by Euler's formula. Yeah. So we know that Merkur's conjecture one is certainly true for some small values of k. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I showed it here for five, for four, it's very similar. Yeah. But, uh, um, I think, I think uh, we can, so, so what is the next step, right? K equals six and so forth. Uh, but uh, it turns out that it's not true for k equals six. Yeah. And um, so what this is, a, this is a, the result, so for any even integer k at least six, well, it must be even here, but we'll see that it works also for other values. But in, I showed it for even integers at least six. There is an infinite family of planar three connected cubic graphs of circumference at least k, whose cycle spectrum contains no element of k, comma two comma three. Yeah, so, so the intersection here is empty of the cycle spectrum with this interval. Uh, um, and and this, this yields infinitely many counterexamples to, to this conjecture one. Of map, yeah. Uh, you can you have infinitely many k for which it works, and for any for each k you get an infinitely many graphs. And um, I want to show you the the idea of the, the. In fact, in this case, I can show you basically all the proof because because it's not it's not uh, difficult, um, uh, but you you just need to see it, right? Sometimes sometimes it's such uh, there are such. Uh, Conjectures and such proofs. So we just need, need to see it. And 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 uh, let me show you how this works. So um, so you consider this graph H here, um, and and you see there are there are some dots to the right and to the left. Just just continue this this uh, this piece in a circular fashion and close it. Yeah, uh, you see there are two rows of hexagons. On, on top and to the bottom of these are two rows of pentagons, and then you have a large face. Uh, uh, inside and a large face outside. Okay, and we really want this face to be to be fairly large. Uh, uh, it, it it should have length at least two r plus eight. Yeah, uh, and r is some some integer. Yeah, some some natural number. Uh, we'll use that later. Yeah, but just imagine a large face inside, large face outside, and this this band made of hexagons and pentagons. Yeah, okay. And you see that there are black and white vertices. We will use this in a moment. Uh, so. Uh, this is the first step. Um, now we will use two operations, A and B, which are defined here in this, this figure. I think it's easy, easiest just to look at the figures. Um, and, um, and we will replace black vertices according to operation A and white vertices according to operation B. Okay. And um, R, this, is, this will be the, the index. So the, these two graphs here, the, the left hand side, we have a graph. Um, AR, a plane graph AR, and on the right hand side, a, a plane graph BR. So these are um, what replaces a black and a white vertex, respectively. Um, and R shall be here just uh, the number of runs. So that's a number of horizontal line segments here. Okay. Um, so there are these, we have these two operations here. And um, uh, using these operations, replacing in H each black vertex with a copy of AR plus two. Yeah, so we have R plus two rungs and each white vertex with a copy of BR. And we need to respect some orientations given in figure one. I can show you, I'm going back now, I'm showing you. So you see here, there are some numbers um, attached to the vertices. These give you the right orientation how you need to, 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 uh, 
to use the two operations, right? Um, it's not, uh, so the second operation is not symmetric. It depends on how you use it, like again. Uh, but you do that uh, in, the, in the right way. And uh, uh, we get a planar graph. It's three connected, it's cubic. The circumference of AR plus two and of BR is two R plus five. Uh, so circumference, that's what the, the length of a longest cycle. And um, any cycle in G of length greater than two R plus five uh, has length at least four R plus 15. Uh, and this is just the length of a cycle bounding the face F all to the cycle bounding the face F prime. Uh, I'll go back, what do I mean by F and F prime? There are just two, two cases in fact here due to, the, um, due to the construction. You see this is the pentagon here, up here, the F or a hexagon F prime. Uh, and you need to go around now. So either you stay in one of your A, R plus twos or BRs, right? That's, that's these two graphs. But if you want to go out to make the cycle longer, that's what you're looking for. You need to go around at least once one of these faces, right? Because uh, the big, um, say, uh, inner face or top face here and bottom face, th those are we we chose those to be quite quite long, quite so. So that's not a problem in this argument. But uh, you need to go around f or around f prime, and that gives you um, these lengths for r plus fifteen. Um, and so, so thus, for every length here, L between two R plus six and four R plus fourteen, um, this is this is the the graph contains no cycle of length L. This is the gap we're looking at, right? Because two R plus five we do have present in A R plus two and B R, but two R plus six is, is not present, and so forth. And and after that, there are no more cycles of those lengths present up to four R plus fifteen. So if we go up to four R plus fourteen, we're good. That's still, in, it's still a gap. It's still not present in the graph. Uh, and then you just set k equal to r plus six and the proof is complete. That's all there is to it, yeah? Um, since g clearly has circumference, at least k, that's not a problem, yeah? Um, so we have just proven Macro's conjecture, yeah? Uh, this is uh, 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 very, uh, my, my, my modest contribution to this. Uh, and it would not really warrant to give a talk on such a modest contribution, right? But there have been some subsequent developments, uh, which I which I would like to point out, uh, which I think are very interesting and 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 uh, really push here beyond this result. So we know now that conjecture one is not true, right? But we can say much more, right? Um, so and this is this is work due to Tsui and Lo, and they very recently further expanded on this. And I, I want to talk about about their strategy because they very nice. So they, in their paper, they basically, they combine um, for, for certain bounds, they, they use my ideas and for, for other bounds, they use Mecca's ideas and they also add their own. So, so I wanna talk about one of their, one of their results and, and the proof strategies that they use there. I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's quite nice. Um, so we'll need for this um, uh, two functions, F and F3. So, so let me introduce those. So for any positive integer K, let f of k be the minimum integer k prime, uh, which is at least k, such that every planar three connected graph g of circumference at least k has a cycle whose length is at this interval k comma k prime. Okay, um, and f sub three of k is defined in the same way, but now we're looking at planar three connected cubic graphs. Okay, so the three just indicates three regularity. Um, now um, I I will re phrase the, the results we have seen um, in the language of these functions so that we have a better grasp on these. Yeah? So, so Maka, what did he show? Maka showed that F3K is at most 2K plus nine for any K at least two, right? And he also proved that F3K is greater than 2K plus two for any even K at least four. So you see F3K is somewhere between these two values in, in Maka's paper, yeah? And he conjectured, so that was his conjecture one, that F3K is at most 2K plus two. So in fact, it would be equal, right? Because he, he, showed the, he showed greater than or equal to, and now he conjectured less or equal to. But we just disproved this conjecture, yeah? Um, so for every even K at least six, there are planar three connected cubic graphs, which have no cycle length in K comma 2K plus two. Yeah? So certainly, certainly F3K is at least 2k plus three for any even k at least six, uh, for infinitely many k. Yeah. And we shall see that in fact, you cannot do better. Yeah? 
um, than 2k plus 3. That's actually the value. So the, the exact value of f3k was only known for k at most 4. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's not so much. So, so what is f3k for k at least 5? And indeed, Tui and Lo, they give a complete answer to this question. Yeah? Um, they show some small for the small values also they do it, but in particular they show that f3 of k is 2k plus 3. Yeah, so this was only a bound in my result, but now it's sharp. It's the exact, it's the exact bound for any k uh, 6 or 8 or at least 10. And there are some, some, who, uh, some exceptions here, which I will show you in an overview. Yeah, but the important part here, the important thing to, to see here is it, it is 2k plus 3 for, for uh, if you go beyond 10. So that's here the, 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 the important answer. And they went further. They did not only deal with this problem for the cubic case. Yeah? Um, they, only, they also dealt with the planar three connected graphs. Yeah? So for the general case of the, for the one skeleton of polyhedra. And there they showed that again, the same bound of 2k plus three is true for any k at least five. And this settles affirmatively Macca's conjecture two. Yeah? So, so conjecture one, was not true. Yeah? It was, it was instead of that 2k plus 2, that was not the correct bound, but 2k plus 3 was, um, was, was the right bound. Yeah? And then, and here for the conjecture 2, indeed, there is such a constant. Yeah? We, can, we can immediately we have it here due to the result of the and law. So both conjectures have been settled. Um, now, uh, I would like to talk a bit about the proof. Because, because I think it's a nice combination of, of some, uh, of some uh, ideas here of, of, of Merck and then also some, some new ideas that Sui and Lo introduced. Um, yeah, here, this is an overview. So just if you're interested in, well, uh, uh, what is actually the difference between three regular or not three regular planar three connected graphs, yeah? And you get also with respect to, to the gaps in the cycle spectrum, of course, that's what we're talking about. Um, you can see here that in fact, only for five, and seven and nine, there is a quality, there is a difference. And all other uh, uh, values here for these two functions, f of k and f, f, f sub three of k, they are the same, yeah? And the most important part is of course, what happens asymptotically, that's two k plus three. Okay, so this is the overview. Um, now among the results proven by Tsui and Lo is the following. So this is, this is one of the central results to show that if you have a, a integer k at least three, then every planar, three connected graph G, yeah, no, we're not cubic here, not necessarily cubic, it's just a general planar three connected graph G with circumference at least K, then this graph has a cycle length in K comma two K plus three. Yeah, uh, again, that two K plus three here, yeah. Uh, so this is, this is uh, um, what I want to talk about now and give you an overview just how, uh, on how this proof works of this statement. So um, the, the first thing uh, we need is a, is a lemma uh, which is essentially due to Merka. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a repackaging and a slight generalization of two lemmas of Merka, but, but it's essentially due to him. But I want to show it to you because it's really important for the strategy. And we need just a, a little definition here for, so um, it's very intuitive for any fixed positive integer k, a cycle is short if it has length strictly less than k and otherwise it is long, yeah? I think, I think this, is, this is easy to remember. And the phase is short if its boundary cycle is short and the phase is long if its boundary cycle is long, yeah? So short means below the gap, long means beyond the gap, okay? So uh, we will need that, we will use that frequently. Now, what is the lemma set? Uh, essentially due to map, yeah? Let k at least three be an integer and every plane three connected graph, now plane, by plane I mean planar and embedded in the Euclidean plane, yeah, this is standard. Every plane three connected graph G with circumference at least K, we always need that, but with no cycle length in K comma two K contains a plane two connected subgraph G prime and now with five nice properties. Yeah. And what are these properties of this subgraph? So, so we're, we're taking the graph G and um, we are reducing the, prop, the, the, the difficulty of the problem to the subgraph G prime. And we, then we will later on in the proof, we will further transform this graph G prime. Yeah? Um, so what are the properties of this graph G prime? First of all, no two short facial cycles. Yeah? So that was length less than K. So this was below the gap. Yeah? No two short facial cycles of G prime share a common edge. Okay? Now um, it might happen that uh, they share a vertex. 
Yeah, this is absolutely possible. We are not in the cubic case here. Yeah, so so at this stage they can absolutely they can they can share a vertex, but uh, um, two short cycles do not share a common edge. Yeah, this is important because this will then continue into the proof and give us some some other nice structural properties. Okay, so this is the first property. Now G prime does contain a long facial cycle. Yeah. Um, now you might say, oh, of course, of course there is a long cycle. That's a that's a a condition which we set. But the point here is that there is a long facial cycle, okay? Uh, so that needs to be proven. Okay. Third property: every long facial cycle in G prime is also a facial cycle in G of the same length. So these nicely um, uh, are uh, inherited, right, by by this uh, transition to G prime. Fourth property here: if the intersection of two long facial cycles of G prime is non-empty, then it is either a vertex or an edge. Yeah? And the fifth property, for every bounded short face F in G prime, every face in G that is in the interior of F and contains an edge from the boundary of F, yeah, has some, some common edge there, uh, is also short. Uh, and uh, the same thing uh, for the unbounded version, and then of course you need to go to the extreme. Yeah? So these five properties, now I absolutely do not expect you to, to, to remember them or anything like that. I just want to give you a, an, a, a flavor, an idea of the flavor of uh, uh, the properties we need here for this. We can find, yeah, we can find a plane to connect its subgraph G prime with these nice properties. Yeah, And this will, this will then help us uh, uh, to, to further simplify the problem until we can, we can uh, crack it. Okay. Um, so this is Mecca's lemma. Yeah, and Sui, Sui and Lo uh, use it to great effect. Um, and uh, so once more, their result up there, the theorem, uh, um, and now let's get to the proof. So just, just to, re won't recall it now, but just so you can read it again, what we're actually proving here. And this would be a proof by contradiction. So assume G has no cycle of length in K comma two K plus three, right? The statement is there must be some cycle of such length, but now we assume no, the intersection of the cycle spectrum with this, with this interval is actually empty, yeah? Now, let G prime be the subgraph of G given by the lemma. We know the lemma gives us this nice subgraph G prime. Yeah? And now we get a subgraph G double prime from G prime by two kinds of vertex splitting. Yeah? And these are, these are quite quickly explained. So the, the first one uh, works as follows. And you see the situation, it's, it's, uh, you can look at the figure. So you have a vertex V of degree greater than three, strictly greater than three. And if V is not in any short facial cycle, that's what these words is long, 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 and so forth. This is what, what this stands for. Yeah? There is no short facial cycle there. We split V into two vertices, V1 and V2. Yeah? So that means replacing V by two adjacent vertices, V1 and V2, so that every neighbor of V is joined to either V1 or V2, such that both these new vertices have degree at least three, and planarity is preserved. Yeah? Of course, you could start to cross the edges. And, oh, we don't want that. We want planarity here. Yeah, and and it is important also to maintain here the minimum degree of, of three. Yeah, of at least three. Yeah. Okay. So this is the first vertex split operation. Yeah, I think I think this is this is uh, this is clear, right? We have we have a vertex is degree greater than three surrounded by long faces. You split it in this fashion. Okay. And there is a second operation which we need. Now, for any vertex v of degree greater than three, just as before. If V is in some short facial cycle, then we have this situation, right? Actually, short facial cycle we see on, on the left hand side here. Um, then let W1, V, W2 be the path here in the boundary of that short face. And then we split the vertex V into V1 and V2 again, such that V1 should be cubic yeah, of degree exactly three, and its neighbors are precisely W1, W2, and V2. Okay, so again, I think that the figure illustrates this. Um, so these are the two vertex splitting operations that we that we use here, and uh, um, the next step is, is also clear, right? Um, we we now use these successively. Yeah, we split vertices of degree greater than three successively. I should also point out that in any case, uh, um, these new vertices v and V1 and V2 that we obtain each time when we apply this operation are always of degree at least three. No? So we successively split vertices of degree greater than three in G prime with these two operations until every vertex is of degree at most three. No? Um, 
and this this certainly terminates. This process terminates, and this gives us a two connected plane subcubic graph. So subcubic means all the vertex degrees are at most three, right? which we'll call G double prime. And the phases here can be naturally identified with those of G prime. Yeah, I'll go back to the operation. So, so this was operation one. You can see there's a there's a clear correspondence, right? Even when you apply the operation, uh, the phases uh, they, they are not uh, they, they of course don't remain untouched at all of the phases, but there is a clear correspondence. Yeah, and for the second operation, the same thing can be said. Yeah, um, and uh, and this has some. And, and so these phases are in a natural correspondence. So as, and as G double prime is subcubic, the intersection of any two facial cycles in G double prime does not have any isolated vertices. And we will use that. This is part of a, of a crucial inequality we will use. Yeah. So, so in, I'll go back for a moment here. So in Mecca's lemma, in G prime, we only knew that two short facial cycles um, no two short facial cycles share a common edge, right? They could intersect. That was possible. But now uh, we are in the situation that um, the intersection of any two facial cycles in double prime does not have any isolate. Okay. Um, so by using the lemma, we get the following properties of G, of G double prime. And these are, you can you use, of course, here the, the power of the, of, the, of the lemma, right? Of these five properties. So the first property here is that no two short facial cycles of G double prime intersect, right? That's, that's not anymore, uh, maybe, maybe they have a vertex in common, that's not possible anymore. Yeah? They are pairwise disjoint, the short facial cycles, a set of short facial cycles. We will use this in a moment, yeah? Um, and now the second property is that G double prime has some long facial cycle, yeah? Uh, and uh, uh, the third property is that every long facial cycle in G double prime corresponds to a long facial cycle in G, yeah, possibly of shorter length in G, of course. You, you, you can see here with the operations that, that long um, faces might become longer, yeah? but, uh, but that's not an issue for us. We, we just need that, that they do not become shorter, yeah? that they fall into the, in, what, in, in what we want to be the gap. Right? That would be bad. Um, and the fourth property here is that no two long facial cycles of G double prime can have two edges in common. Yeah? Um, and uh, we now, this is a final step. Yeah, We went from the graph G with a lemma to graph G prime, which is five nice properties. We moved to G double prime with the two vertex splitting operations. Yeah? And we, are, we now go to a graph H, uh, which you just get by suppressing all vertices in degree two. Wow. And uh, the phases now in G double prime, again, they correspond in an obvious way to the phases in H. Yeah, because you just suppressed two valent vertices. Yeah, um, of course, faces would become shorter yeah, in this process, but but there is a clear correspondence. And uh, for any face f in G double prime, if we denote by um, L of f the length of this face in G double prime, and L sub h of f the length of the corresponding face uh, uh, in H, um, we we'll, we will use this. So and uh, by x. Um, the set of short faces in G double prime and Y, the set of long faces in G double prime. Then by this first property of the graph G double prime, we have these inequalities, yeah? And what does this tell us? That the order of this graph H is at least as great as the sum over the H length of these faces F, yeah? If they are short, yeah? We take the sum of all these short faces and, and uh, well, they are pairwise disjoint. Yeah, that's what A prime says. Uh, let me go back for a moment. So A prime, no two short facial cycles of G double prime intersect. So that's what we use here. And this will be a this will be a crucial part in just a moment when we want to get our final our final contradiction. Yeah. So that this order is at least the sum over these uh, uh, H length or the length in H of these short faces. And this is of course at least three times the number of short faces. Of course. Yeah. Um, so now. Uh, Let's get to, to, the, to the final argument. So then there is a, uh, a bit of, of uh, uh, an argument on subdivided paths. What are those? So the paths that have end vertices of degree three and internal vertices of degree two. Um, I will skip that here. I don't, I, I, uh, uh, it's in the archive paper, yeah? Uh, but uh, I will skip that here. And uh, then Tsui and Lo, they argue with the properties of subdivided paths in this, in this graph G double prime, and they obtain the inequality that is up here. Yeah. So the sum of the length of the long faces, that's what we're using here, is at most three times the order of H plus K minus seven 
times the number of short faces. Yeah? And then crucially, as the length of a face is at least 2k plus 4 for any long face, yeah? because we said we assumed at the beginning, well, my gap goes to 2k plus 3, right? So a face, it cannot be, uh, it must have length. If it's long, it must have a length at least 2k plus 4. Yeah? That's, that's just after the gap stops. So uh, must be at least 2k plus 4. And then you just use Euler's formula and uh, you get this bound again for the sum of the length of the long faces. Yeah? You combine these two bounds yeah, and then you get a contradiction to the inequality we just saw, which simply follows from that property A prime, namely that the short faces, um, this one, that the short faces of G double prime do not intersect. Yeah. And this graph G double prime, which we obtain from G prime by these two operations, and G prime was given by a Merkel lemma. Yeah. So this is the proof of, of this theorem um, of Tsuyan law, and which gives us really, uh, let me show you again the, the, uh, the statement. So that every, in every plane of three connected graph G with circumference at least K, you have a cycle length in K comma 2K plus three. And there is again that 2K plus three, right? That's what we were looking for, right? Merka, Merka had the 2K plus two, but then we, we moved to this 2K plus three and this is actually the right answer. Um, and uh, so, so let, me, let me just uh, uh, conclude here maybe with, with a few comments and, uh, and some open problems. So um, I, I think, I think uh, there, are, there are still several interesting things to look at at this problem, even, even if these two conjectures have now been settled. Yeah, uh, I, I hope I was able to give you um, a, a bit of an overview of the, of the techniques. I think, I think none of this is uh, too daunting or so. I, I think they're all, all quite intuitive things, but I think these are very, um, very natural problems. Yeah, we're dealing here with, with a fundamental class of graphs and we're dealing with cycle length. Um, and uh, um, so, so what, what, what could be done? And I, I wanted to, to just mention here three problems that, that uh, um, uh, I've been thinking about, yeah? uh, but no, no clear answer yet. Um, so, so the first one, well, this is a typical, typical question here to determine the smallest graphs with large gaps. Yeah? What is, how, how low can you go with the order? Yeah? Um, but perhaps structurally more, more interesting would be to look at essentially, essentially four connected case. Yeah? So uh, what, what, what are we interested in? What, so, so, so the thing is that um, take, a, take a three separator. Yeah? So a three separator is a set of, of three vertices, the removal of which um, disconnects your graph into at least two components. Yeah, you have a, again, we, are, we have a plane, a three connected graph. So, and you take such a three separator and in the cubic case, essentially four connected uh, means um, that, that all of your, of your three separators will be trivial, that one of the components will be K1, yeah? um, if, you, if, if you are above order seven, okay. So, so that's, what we're, that's what we're looking at now. We're looking at plane of three connected graphs, polyhedral graphs, yeah? in which um, if you have a three separator, then one of the components is K1. So all of this, uh, triangle, uh, cubic vertex replacement uh, uh, argumentation is impossible here. Yeah, and uh, I think I think, and still, this is a very natural class of graphs. So, so I think this would be uh, this would be uh, interesting to look at. What happens with the gaps? Yeah? I, I'm sure I'm convinced that they are different yeah? because so much of the machinery is lost when you look at the essentially four connected case. Yeah? Um, and the third problem here, which uh, uh, I think is also very appealing, uh, uh, is is to treat this problem on 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 surfaces beyond the sphere, right? What what happens for for greater genus? And already on the torus, um, it's this is this is this is not, not difficult to see. Yeah, you you, just, you can take, but the main point is that on the torus, um, you have a hexagonal tiling, right? And uh, you need, I think, I think you need to take care about edge width or face width or some 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 such uh, parameter, but but. Uh, much of the proofs here yeah, of the arguments does translate yeah, if, if, you, uh, if you are careful with these parameters. Um, and, and then already on the torus, if you, if you just take a hexagonal tiling uh, yeah, with large enough edge widths, um, then uh, and, and replace uh, every vertex with a triangle, um, what do you get? You, you get a gap of, um, of uh, four comma, 
comma eleven, right? Because 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 you have a you have a triangle for threes in your spectrum, but four is not. You have to go around the hexagon. But the hexagon is now because you replace the vertices is now a twelve gon. Yeah. So twelve is the first. Uh, if your edge width again, your edge width needs to be large. But but if you have that, then I think I think twelve is is the next number you encounter as a cycle length. So your gap will be four comma eleven. But that's also that's already better than what we can do in the plane. Yeah. So so I think there is there is really um, and then then I've looked also at higher a bit about uh, at at higher genera and there is there is a. Uh, uh, I, I don't yet understand what uh, how the genus comes in, but it definitely comes in somehow. Yeah, um, there there is still the uh, I think some some work to be done, some interesting work. And um, well, uh, I I want to close now uh, just by recalling a classic problem again back on the sphere. Yeah, this is this is uh, due to Malkovich from this is from eighty eight. Uh, really, one of the most important I think conjectures in this context, uh, certainly that every plane of four kinetic graph. Is pancyclic. Pancyclic means you have your your cycle spectrum contains all of the lengths from three up to n to the order of the graph. Yeah, if it contains a cycle of length four. Yeah, you you it's e easy to to give uh, um, examples where you have a gap which is just the number four, right? Just the length four. Uh, but uh, uh, um, other than that, we we there is really not not much known. Certainly not as much as as we would like to. As I would like to to be known about this conjecture. We have some sm short length. We have some long length. There has been some recent progress, I think, on on let's say medium uh, length, yeah, the, which are close to n over two. Uh, but but there, I think there is still a lot to be done uh, also on this conjecture. Um, yeah, and that's what I wanted to close with. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Carol. That was very good. Questions. Thank you. So maybe I can ask a question, but I will stop the recording here and um...